grateful for the opportunity to be here today and to speak alongside my friend Mark Vargo. Mark is the state, Pennington County State's Attorney, a career prosecutor, and a second time TED Talker. Eric is a community activist and organizer. For the last 10 years, he's been working to provide opportunities for our Native American youth in Pennington County. He was recently recognized for those efforts by the Bush Foundation, which named him a Bush Fellow for 2018. This isn't the first time that Mark and I have sat at the same table. Um, 17 years ago, I made some mistakes and uh, got introduced to Mark. 17 years ago, I was a federal prosecutor who worked on Eric's case, and I can tell you that I would never have envisioned sharing a stage with him. But we are here precisely because Pennington County is trying to do something different. And what we are trying to do requires your help. So we are here to tell you about it, and we are here to ask for your help. This program only works if people know about it, if kids can enlist in it and enroll in it. And what we're doing is called Young Adult Diversion. To make it easier to understand, a little background is I am an enrolled tribal member. And to make this unique program successful, um, we believe in engaging the people where the people are at. In our culture, children are considered sacred. Even the word that we use to identify children, wakayaja. Waka means sacred, yeja means gift. Now it's not new to the criminal justice system to have a different classification for kids. You're all familiar with the juvenile system. But both what we learned from Lakota culture and what science taught us suggested that we should expand that view. Because what psychological studies will tell us is that young adults from 18 to 25 actually think more like and have brains more like their juvenile counterparts than they do like true adults. And the way that we treated them in the criminal justice system often only exacerbated the problem. Too often these young adults would plead guilty to something and receive a sentence that would do little or nothing to change their behaviors down the road. As a matter of fact, there are a number of studies that suggest that incarceration is even criminogenic, which means that it increases the risk that we're going to end up with somebody coming back to jail. Too many of our youth are raising themselves today. So expecting them to possess the experience that only comes with age, the maturity to solve some of these challenges without family support, peer support, community support, was foolish. And labeling them as criminals isn't helping. So we started with two crimes, petty theft and the possession of marijuana. Both are misdemeanors in the state of South Dakota, and we did a little background study. We found out that the average sentence we were imposing was a $650 fine. That's life-changing money for some of these young people. If they were to get the money, it had to come at the expense of other core needs. So in essence, it's punishing them for enduring poverty. And it can mean a lifetime of economic hardship because it's not just the $650, it's the collateral consequences. Those include loss of the ability to get federal housing, the loss of the ability to get a federal job, federal contract, to work on that concrete crew, the loss of the opportunity to get a student loan and improve yourself post high school. So what we wanted to do was to change our paradigm. We needed to engage these people and to require some sort of input from them. At the other end of the scale, of course, we had families with greater means. And those families with greater means, that meant that mom and dad paid $650, and the only consequence to the young offender was whatever butt-chewing he got when he got home. 
So we're asking them now in this program to give something of themselves and to engage themselves in the process of their sentence. So this is a program that engages the people where the people are at. So it's appropriate. It's reconnecting our young people with their community, with their culture. And we began with three core principles. It has to be harder than pleading guilty. It has to be achievable. And it is never pay to play. And that's why we needed people like Eric Brings White. Because in order for a program like that to work, you have to, as Eric just said, meet the kids where they are. You have to say, where are you now? Where do you want to be? And so the process begins. We offer the option to participate in young adult diversion. And when the young adult comes in, we do conduct an interview. And we try to figure out where are they now and what do they need to get to where they want to be. If they agree to enter the program with whatever conditions that we place on them, they sign a contract and they are given a plan that we believe is appropriate to them. That's one of the things that we've had to do as an office is to ensure that we become more connected with Lakota culture so that the plans that we create for these kids are more appropriate to their present circumstances and the places that they come from. So, wa ohoye. Would you say that with me? Wa ohoye. Wa ohoye. So, wa ohoye, I suggest it just be thought of as balance. In our culture, there's um, six directions. There's north, east, south, and west. But up and down are also considered a direction. East is for new beginnings. It's the dawn of new days. The sun lights the earth. Things can be seen for what they are. West is a time of change. East is yellow. West is black. So the concepts of East and West, it's fairly easy to see how that might fit in with young people who need a new perspective and a new beginning. Eric has told me that West is where the rain comes from, the thunder and the rain, and so that that works together with the East, even though in a Western view we might view them as opposites of each other. They actually work together. And so what we're trying to do is to ensure that these people have the opportunity to see things in a new light according to the East and to make a new beginning or a new way of life according to the West. But what East and West in the Lakota way have reminded my staff is that we are not rejecting these young offenders. What we are doing instead is we are asking them to become the best versions of themselves. The program that I do, I work with Pennington County Young Adult Diversion is simply culture heals. Culture is prevention. Often, our young people don't understand or have never been taught who they are. We begin with these directions. South is the direction of new beginnings, the directions of these youth who are just now on this path they haven't received recognition for. And North, North's always tough. North is considered red. Um, it symbolizes the challenges, the obstacles, the barriers, but it also gives way to accomplishments, resiliency. North fits in because we talk about lighting the path. Eric has often described North to me as a struggle, that even the North wind can be a struggle at times. But both South and North relate to some of the things that we do with these kids. And we often talk in young adult diversion about lighting the path. And the idea is these participants have to walk for themselves. I can't walk for them, I can't carry them, and I can't tell them that it's okay not to walk. But what I can do is commit that we will light the path 
so that their road is easier than it would be in the dark. And if we do that, we ask them to endure some struggle, which is where North comes in. We often use community service. But as Eric just mentioned, what we are talking about is a struggle that comes with a sense of fulfillment. We don't send kids out into ditches to pick up trash. What we ask them to do is to go engage in something that is meaningful to them, whether it's in their home community or whether it's with an organization that they believe in, like Habitat for Humanity or the Humane Society. Because what we want them to do by the end of the day is to form a positive connection between I went to bed dog-tired and I feel damn good. That's why we believe as a staff in North and South. So the sky symbolizes our dreams and our ability to dream. So as a people, our progress, our livelihood, our well-being is gauged solely on our youth's ability to dream and, and even how big they can dream. And that's the beauty of this program. Um, the earth down on Chimaka is considered the root, the standard in which personal growth and development could be measured. For the young people who are ready, one of the most successful programs we have is the jobs program. And it ranges from job shadowing to remind these youths of what that dream really is to actual apprenticeships where at the end of the time frame, they actually have a living wage job, full-time job waiting for them. And nothing will keep a kid out of trouble more than a full-time job that will allow them to provide for themselves and their family. It gives them that new beginning, and it gives them that ability to dream. Wa'ohoye. Come on. Wa'ohoye. Wa'ohoye. So Wa'ohoye is considered the seventh direction. And that's where it's the sacred connection inside of each of us that makes all other six directions relevant. For too long, we relied on jail and prison to be the catalyst for change. But we struggled to find ways to hold people accountable while not simultaneously making it impossible for them to change their way of life. Eric will tell you, prison could be a motivator, right? Very. Uh, avoiding prison <laughs> is a huge motivator, but all the motivation in the world doesn't do any good if the young person isn't able to see a different path. So that's what we try to do. We show them the path. And we've been doing a great job of it. Carolyn Olson and Marty Krause, who run this program for me, or community partners like Eric, have been amazing. We use two measures of whether we're succeeding. One is simply whether the kids can beat the young adults, complete the program requirements. Most places will tell you if you get to half, that's okay. If you get to two-thirds, you've nailed it. We're at 87% success rate for completing the programming that are, is assigned. The other measure of success, obviously, is recidivism. And again, young adults, juveniles, 35 to 45% is a benchmark. Right now, we have 135 people who have not only gone through the program that we assigned to them, but have completed a one-year period of obeying all laws, after which they can have their record sealed and expunged. 135 have been successful, 11 have failed. That's a recidivism rate, ladies and gentlemen, of 7.5%. We're going to jump into a few testimonials because we're pretty proud of ourselves, but these are letters that Marty's gotten that uh, tell us just what they believe that they've done. So from the mouths of some of our young adults, I now don't smoke marijuana. I have a high school diploma. I'm no longer depressed. I received three scholarships, and I started college. This program was a second chance for me. 
And a second chance I refuse to not embrace. This program literally saved my life. This program allowed me to embrace a, a new career path, one that would enable my daughter to have a better future. We got one more Lakota phrase. One more Lakota phrase for you. May I? I'm going to try. Woi humbly, le wakan yeja, ogna punglu apiktelo. Keeping the dream through our children. And it has to be our dream. That's what wo e humbly means. Wo means our. Humbly means dream. You want to try to say it? Wo e humbly. Wo e humbly. Wopila. Wopila. Thank you.